Number 9. Cindy Waldron In May of 2016, Cindy Waldron had travelled to Cairns in Queensland, Australia for a weekend getaway with childhood friend Leanne Mitchell. The pair were celebrating the end of Mitchell's breast cancer treatment and had gone to visit Thornton Beach near Cape Tribulation. They were swimming in the dark and in waist-deep water. Mitchell then heard 46-year-old Waldron cry out, It got me! as her back was turned to the water, what she'd felt were the jaws of a saltwater crocodile, measuring over 14 feet, clamped down on her body. Mitchell reached for Waldron, grabbed her arm and tried striking the crocodile. The pair were powerless to oppose its force and were yanked towards deeper water. Mitchell tried to get a better grasp on Waldron but before long couldn't feel anything anymore as a friend of over three decades was gone. Mitchell was taken to a hospital where she was treated for shock and puncture wounds. Traps were set up by wildlife officials and volunteer search parties scoured the land and water of the remote Daintree National Park following the incident. In June, the crocodile suspected to have been responsible for the attack was euthanized and the contents of his stomach revealed human remains, believed to be Waldron's. In the incident's wake, state government allotted an extra $5.8 million over a three-year period for comprehensive population surveys and crocodile management. Number 8. Kristen McKellar Maine woman Kristen McKellar, aged 32, died in the summer of 2018 after she was struck by a boat while swimming at Damaris Cotter Lake in Jefferson. McKellar and a friend were in the north end of the lake at around 8.45 p.m. Simultaneously, Jonathan D. Roberts of Weyburn, Massachusetts, was operating a motorboat at what would retrospectively be deemed an imprudent speed. The watercraft hit McKellar rendering her unconscious. 43-year-old Roberts and passengers in the boat immediately tried to help the woman, but they were unable to start the boat's engine and started paddling to shore. Members of the Jefferson Fire Department were called to the scene and arrived to find the boat about 30 yards from the dock, with Roberts in the back performing CPR on McKellar. Rescuers took over resuscitation efforts and carried on for about an hour, but to no avail. McKellar was pronounced dead and the following year, Roberts pleaded guilty to reckless operation of a watercraft. He was eventually granted a deferred disposition agreement, requiring him to pay a $400 fine and perform 100 hours of community service. Number 7. Ellen Tishbin In May of 2020, American woman Ellen Tishbin, originally from New Jersey, was visiting the Caribbean island of Antigua alongside her husband, Robert. The couple, described as sailing enthusiasts who regularly navigate through the Caribbean, had been living on board their yacht. They'd made plans to sail from Antigua to Trinidad and Tobago, but COVID-19 travel restrictions meant that they had to remain on the island. The Tishbins intended to rent a villa on Jolly Beach for the upcoming hurricane season. While the couple were docked at Falmouth Harbor, Ellen decided to take a swim. At around 3.30 p.m., the operator of a motorized dinghy had failed to notice her in the water. The 52-year-old woman was struck and sustained critical injuries. She was taken to a local clinic and underwent emergency surgery. Minister of Tourism Charles Fernandez was among the citizens who answered the call to donate blood for Ellen, encouraging others to do the same. Unfortunately, the woman ultimately passed away. Fernandez offered his condolences in the aftermath and explained that because of the travel restrictions, the number of yachts in the Falmouth area had greatly increased. The boater who'd struck Ellen, only identified as a 68-year-old British sailor, cooperated with investigators but it's unclear if he was charged in connection to her death. Number 6. Kayla Marlowe In early 2021, a swimmer in New Zealand was dragged out to sea by the current and subsequently fatally mauled by a shark. 19-year-old Kayla Marlowe, originally from Perth, Australia, and her friends were in the sea off Wahi Beach, on the western end of the country's North Island. As they were swimming in rough waters, the teenager was overpowered by the current and pulled towards deeper sea. It was there that she was charged by a large shark, later identified as a great white. A witness would report seeing the animal's fin protrude out of the water as it had begun circling Marlowe. Rescuers rushed to the teenager's position but couldn't reach before she was attacked. The teenager was still alive when she was brought to shore, where emergency workers performed CPR on her for at least 20 minutes. In spite of their efforts, she was ultimately pronounced dead. Number 5. Leah Wilson British teenager Leah Wilson suffered a fatal swimming accident while vacationing with her family and friends in Tenerife in August of 2019. Two days before her tragic demise, Wilson had completed 
a bucket list goal of swimming with sea lions. Wilson and her friend 18-year-old Renee Goldbeer had reportedly returned to the villa in the early hours of August the 12th after they'd spent the night partying with local youths. Wilson had woken up earlier than the rest of her group and went for a swim unattended at the hotel's pool. Goldbeer raised the alarm after finding her unresponsive underwater. Wilson's mother attempted CPR and an ambulance rushed her to a local hospital where she regained a faint pulse. Unfortunately, she'd accumulated too much water in her lungs and brain, a condition to which she succumbed later in the afternoon. A post-mortem examination revealed the presence of cocaine in her system and that her blood alcohol level was 1.5 times over the drink drive limit. While the official cause of death had been listed as drowning, the moments leading up to it remained unclear. Based on a split in her mouth and Wilson's bruised chin, it was theorized that she'd gotten knocked out after diving or slipping into the pool. Number 4. Chris Watkins Chris Watkins from Pontypool, South Wales was on a holiday to Tenerife, along with several of his friends in September of 2020. The 43-year-old grandfather dove into the swimming pool of the apart hotel Columbus in Playa de las Americas. Moments after the jump, Watkins was heard crying out, I've broken my neck, I can't feel anything, help me! Friend Christian Priest, also 43, initially thought that the man was joking, but soon came to realize the seriousness of the situation. Watkins was rushed to a hospital in severe pain and had to undergo an urgent surgery for which he was placed in a medically induced coma. His family, with the help of generous donors, raised nearly $40,000 to fund an air ambulance that took Watkins back to Wales on October the 6th. According to his sister, who described him as the bionic man, the first thing that he'd done upon waking up from his coma was ask for a pint of beer and a pizza. Doctors feared that he'd never walk again, but Watkins defied expectations through a remarkable recovery and a few months after the accident, started taking his first steps. Number 3. Paul Millerchip in the fall of 2021, a British father of two was killed by a great white shark off Port Beach in North Fremantle, Australia. 57-year-old Paul Millerchip was enjoying his regular morning swim when the 14-foot-long predator bit into his body, pulling him to the ocean's depth. His wife, Thurl, also in her late 50s, reported that the attack had come out of the blue, but other sources claimed that the shark had been spotted in the water prior to the incident. A group of teenagers witnessed the attack and were later praised by the authorities for raising the alarm, thus enabling other swimmers to clamber to nearby rocks for safety. A 48-hour search for Millichip's body was launched in the aftermath, but all that was recovered of him was a pair of swimming goggles. It's believed that aside from the Great White, the man had also been charged by a tiger shark. The combined onslaught had likely resulted in dismemberment, thus further complicating official efforts of finding his remains. Today's topic was requested by Chirio Totoro, Kyle Just, and Miranda Decker. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Tate Ramsden An elite college swimmer died in December of 2015 while trying to improve his endurance at a YMCA in Sarasota, Florida. 21-year-old Tate Ramsden, a member of the Dartmouth swim team, was vacationing with family in the area at the time of the Christmas holidays. While at the pool on December the 26th, he'd already done laps totaling an estimated 4,000 yards. To increase performance, competitive natators train to take a minimal number of breaths, which enables them to swim faster. Towards that end, Ramsden reportedly decided to conclude the swimming session by completing four underwater laps on a single breath. At some point during his routine, the athlete's sister and cousin noticed a lack of movement in the water. Ramsden was pulled from the pool and CPR was attempted by lifeguards, but paramedics eventually declared him dead at the scene. It's believed that he drowned after ignoring the urge to breathe and experiencing a shallow water blackout. The lack of oxygen to the brain can cause a swimmer to unexpectedly pass out, after which the body forces a breath, causing them to inhale water. Number 1. Douglas Waymark and Nick Thomas In August of 2017, British endurance athlete Douglas Waymark, aged 44, was taking part in the Enduroman, an ultra-distance triathlon from England to France. The grueling race, frequently mentioned among the world's most difficult endurance events, is framed as an arch-to-arch -arch triathlon. It starts with an 87-mile run from the Marble Arch in London to Dover on the Kent coast, and then continues with a swim of roughly 21 miles across the channel to Calais, France. From there, it continues with a 181-mile bike ride 
to the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. Less than 50 athletes have finished the challenge, with the record time for completion being 50 hours and 24 minutes. Douglas Waymark had completed the running element of the race and was about halfway into the swimming portion. He had undertaken intense physical challenges in the past, including the Seven Summits Challenge, which is climbing to the top of the highest mountain on each continent. In a previous Facebook post, he referred to the Arch to Arch as arguably the toughest thing he'd ever attempted. After 9 p.m., while Waymark was swimming the channel roughly 12 nautical miles from Dover, he started experiencing difficulties. He indicated to a support vessel that he was unable to continue. Waymark then lost consciousness in the boat and within 10 minutes was airlifted to a hospital in Ashford, where he ultimately passed away. A year prior, 45-year-old Nick Thomas, who had completed an Enduro Man in 2014, died in similar circumstances. In 2016, Thomas decided to push himself even further and undertook the channel swim without a wetsuit, even though water temperatures in the summer hover around 61 degrees Fahrenheit or below. Thomas had swum for an estimated 16 hours through strong currents and was less than a mile from Calais when he became unresponsive. He was pulled in the support boat and taken to a French hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Thanks for watching. Would you rather swim a mile up the Amazon or run 50 feet on hot coals? Let us know in the comments section below.